Hello everybody! In this video we will see how to use, how to create an async reactive form validator and display a spinner, loader and an input field. Let's get started. So I think that we have a field like we see here. We have a username, just an input field. I use Bootstrap for this one. And already we have in the browser that this field is not valid. We will see in a while bear with me, we will see in a while how we have the validators there. And as you can see here, we have this exclamation mark and our goal is while typing to display here a spinner, replace the, ex the exclamation mark and display a spinner. So let's see how the code looks like. We currently have a username form control and in the engine unit we initialize it. It is like this username, this form control, the default value, the first argument of the constructor is null and the second one is that we have the validators required. So this is just a required field, right? And if we can see also the template, we can see that we have the label, username, and here we have our input. It's type text, we have the class, the placeholder, and we have also the form control username nice and as you can see here we have two different classes the first one is is invalid and we will set this class if the field if the form control is invalid and also we have another one another class that is valid this one and we will set this class for the opposite way if this field is valid and if you go if you see again in the browser if we type something here we can see that we have different experience. Now we have a green border and also we have the green check mark. Now, what we need to do is, of course, not to have when we render the, the browser, when we render the fields, not to see immediately the red border. And also, as we said previously, to see here a small spinner. How to do this? Well, First of all, we need to introduce an async validator. And what is this? Let's go here, uh, control click to see the control. The first one, the first argument is the form state. The second argument is the validator options. And the third argument is the async validator. And it returns an async validator function or an async validator function array or null. Okay, so what we need is to create an async validator. And let's do this. I will name this one, this validator, like a uh, user validator. So it will be private, a user validator function, validator. And this one will return an async validator function. Async validator function, sorry, function. Yeah, this one. The async validators in a nutshell is a function that returns another function. So this is the user validator is a function, a wrapper function, and we need to return an inner function, an anonymous one. And the argument of this will be an abstract control. This one. And now we need to define what this function will return. We will see it in a while. So let's start by this. Actually, at the time that we will invoke this function, we need to have an API call. But currently, we do not have an API call. So let's, let's pretend that here we will have an API call. And for the sake of this example, we will create another function. We will mimic, of course, the API. And we will name it like user exists. And the user exists will accept a username of type string and we re will return an observable boolean. So here what we have to do is return just like return a boolean value, an observable boolean value. Definitely we do not we don't like to have it like this. We need to have some sort of logic. And to do this, I'm going to create here an array pretending that actually this one, this, this function, will pretend an actual API call. And what is the goal of the API call? To send a username and return back 
whether this username exists in the backend or not, exists in the database or not. So let's say that we have here uh, a, some standard usernames, which will be just an array, usernames, and I will type John and Jane. So th these are the usernames that already exist in the database. Now, we will replace this one, this of true, with of these usernames includes, and we will provide here this username. And to have a better experience for our example, we will also have a pipe uh, with a delay of 2000, two seconds. Let's import this as well. Definitely not this. Let's import this as well. Okay, so now here we have the user exists, which is, as we said previously, an API call. Let's suppose that it's an API call. And we have to use it. To use this method we will be like this user exists. And now, since we have this the, here the control, we will provide in the user exists the control.value. and we need to have now our logic. The sync validators work like the following. Let's go again here and see the following that. The sync validator return either a validation error or null, which means that the validation error is no more than a key value pair, and we have to return the key value pair in case the validator is not satisfied. If the validator is satisfied, we have to return null. So let's close this and have our logic. We need to have a map, capture the response, and we will have our logic like, if I have response, this means that the username already exists, so I will return an object and I will name it like user exists, true, Otherwise, I will return true. And this is what we have to return. Let me also close this in parentheses. And the missing part is the return type of the nested function. So this nested function, what it returns is an observable of validation errors or null. So this is what this function returns. And now we have to use this validator. So what we're doing is the following, that if I have response, this means that the username, the provided username already exists. So we have to return a key value pair, just an object. And in any other case, we return null. To use this, we will utilize the third argument of the form control and we will provide this user validator. As you can see, we do not provide the control. The control will be auto provided during the runtime. So let's see how this works. If I type something, for example, John we have a delay, and then we see that username already exists. If I type Jane, we have a delay of two seconds. After two seconds, we see that username already exists. And if I type something else, we see that this is okay. The missing part is to have here the spinner. So let's add the spinner as well. We need to go in the app component HTML and here, apart from class is valid, class is invalid, we will also have one more class and this is going to be class is loading. And the condition for this one, for the is loading, will be username pending. So you might be wondering what this pending is all about. So actually the, the pending is a getter, as we can see a boolean getter, 
and returns true if this control is in the process of conducting a validation check, false otherwise. It's an excellent way to use this for async operators, async validators, to make sure that this is still loading. So let's see what we currently have in the browser. If I type John, here we can see the spinner. If I type Jane, again we can see here the spinner, which is awesome. This is what we wanted to do. And the missing part here is that on the first lo load, on the first render, we still see that we have the red border and we still see that the username already exists. We don't like to see the error message immediately. So how can we fix this? The problem is this class. So we can do the following that I want to present, I want to set the is invalid class if the username is invalid and also if the username has any errors, user exists. And what is this user exists? Let's go back into the code and it's this one. And let's see what we have done. We do not see the red border, we do not see the error message. And if we type anything, we can see the spinner. And after a while, we see the error. And if we have something successful, we can see the green check mark. Nice. This is very cool. And if you're wondering in terms of styling how we have achieved this, there is loading. Is a class is loading and I have a spinner SVG and I place it inside the input with background position as you can see uh, the position is right with 8 pixel and sender this is the result thanks for watching